The question was, I keep talking about this stuff called sulforaphane and broccoli. What? I don't get it. Um, to paraphrase. Um, okay, no, it's actually kind of complicated. Um, and so I have a video called The Second Strategy for something about broccoli, for eating broccoli, cooking broccoli. Um, and it talks about various methods to maximize the compound within cruciferous vegetables that we think accounts for its near miraculous benefits. When I'm talking about cruciferous vegetables, I'm talking about cabbage family vegetables like broccoli, kale, collards, cabbage, arugula. These are cruciferous vegetables and the reason why they take a hallowed place within my daily dozen like I tell people to eat vegetables, but the healthiest of healthy vegetables are cruciferous vegetables. Why? Because they are unique in that they have, uh, they contain within them uh, these uh, a class of precursor compounds called glucosinolates, which when you cut them, when you cut these vegetables, the glucosinolates are transformed by an enzyme called morosinase into sulforaphane which is what we want. That is what we think accounts for their benefits. And you say, wait a second, what benefits are we talking about? Oh, what benefits are we not talking about? Look at, type in broccoli into nutritionfacts.org and you'll see these remarkable studies about people eating broccoli, broccoli sprouts, etc. So for example, there was a study on autism, found that you randomize uh, young boys with uh, autism to broccoli sprouts or not. Um, and it was placebo controlled studies, so they can pack them in, so you didn't even know who was in which group till the end. The f first and only intervention ever proven to actually improve the core symptoms of autism. What was the magic drug? It wasn't a drug, it was broccoli sprouts. And why use broccoli sprouts? Broccoli sprouts are particularly concentrated in these sulforaphane precursor compounds. So they don't actually contain sulforaphane, they contain sulforaphane precursor compounds, so you have to do something to the vegetables in order to get the benefits. So, glucosinolates, oh we could write it on the board, here we go, oh look at this, we got a board! Glucosinolates to sulforaphane. Okay, and this is catalyzed by an enzyme called myrosinase. Okay, so these, this is what's inside broccoli. Uh, cruciferous veggies. Okay, but this is what we want. And this is not what's in, this is all that's in the vegetables, this is what we want. Okay, so if you um, in fact, I just did this recently. Um, you take a head of cauliflower, if you have an Instapot, one of these uh, electronic pressure cookers, you can put a whole head of cauliflower, um, in, which is a cruciferous vegetable, um, and three minutes later, poof, you have a cooked, whole cooked cauliflower, and you can slice it like steaks and put over a wonderful, like, lemontini sauce, whatever you want to do. Okay, that is a terrible way to cook uh, cauliflower. <laughs> and the reason is, this enzyme is destroyed by heat. Destroyed by heat. So you cook that cauliflower, morosinase is completely killed, and you don't get sulforaphane. Okay. Now, do you get a little bit of sulforaphane? You do, why? Because there's actually, this enzyme is found in cruciferous vegetables and some kinds of gut bacteria actually have morosinase in them. And so depending on your gut flora, you may actually be able to get a little bit of sulforaphane eating even cauliflower cooked like that. Okay. But what would have been a much better way to cook that cauliflower? If, how, okay, so how does this reaction happen? Barosinase is activated. Actually, what happens is like a chemical flare. If you look at a chemical flare, it's two different chemicals in two different compartments. And when you crack the flare open, they mix. They're like little glass tubes. They mix, and then the chemical reaction happens. And so inside, it's cool, if we could actually, if we could actually show a, a cell of a, of a broccoli leaf, you'd see there's these little vacuoles, these little, these little spheres packed full of active enzyme, packed full of glucosinolase, and they're separated. And when that's disrupted, when that 
chemical flare is broken, for example, when you cut it with a knife, or you bite it with your teeth, or, which is the whole reason it evolved, a bug nibbles on that leaf. A bug nibbles on the leaf, and all of a sudden, those two little vacuoles, those two little spheres open up, and they mix. The enzyme mixes with glucose and lace, and poof, sulforaphane is born, and sulforaphane tastes like broccoli, and the bug goes, ooh, this tastes like broccoli, and goes bite some other plant. <laughs> okay, so that, I mean, that's why it happened. Okay, so if instead of cooking that whole um, uh, cauliflower whole, if I first would have chopped it up, then when it was raw, then I would have been the bug, nibbling, nibbling the, I would have been chopping it up, spilling those contents, mixing this up, sulforaphane is created, and sulforaphane is heat stable. So are glucosinolates. It's only the enzyme that's um, uh, knocked off by heat. So you can cook the sulforaphane all you want, and you would get um, the benefits. So if you're making broccoli soup, how do you make broccoli soup? You could imagine most people, I think, cook broccoli, and then blend it in a blender, right? right? So you, you cook broccoli in water, and then it heats up, and then you put it in a blender and make soup. That's the wrong way to do it, because you're killing off the enzyme. What you do is you chop, 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 while it's raw, um, and then you have to wait 45 minutes. This takes 45 minutes to happen. So that's what I call the hack and hold te technique. The hack and hold technique is you chop your greens, your cruciferous vegetables, you wait 45 minutes, and then you cook them. Then you can cook all you want, because we already created this, but it takes 45 minutes. So what do I do every morning? Where, where is Breege? There she is. My beloved can, can attest that every morning I get up and I chop my collard greens, or I chop my kale. And she, why is there all this chopped grains? That's a weird breakfast. It's not breakfast, that's for lunch, because <laughs> I got a hack and hold. All right, all right. So, but then I came out with this video called the second strategy for cooking broccoli or eating broccoli, and that is, what if you don't want to wait? What if you forgot to chop your, and you're hungry, and you want to eat those collard grains, and you don't want to wait 45 minutes? Aha, well, there's another cruciferous vegetable. Uh, mustard greens are cruciferous vegetables. What are mustard greens made out of? Mustard seeds. You take a mustard seed, it turns into mustard greens. And what is powdered, what is mustard powder? It's just powdered mustard seeds. So researchers had this idea, maybe there's active enzyme in mustard powder that you buy on the shelf. So they took a little mustard powder, so they boiled greens without cutting it, or they cut it and didn't wait 45 minutes, and so the enzyme should have been destroyed, no sulforaphane, and then once it was cooked, they sprinkled a little mustard powder, which you can get anywhere at the store, and it was teeny, like a little pinch. Teeny little pinch of mustard powder, poof! Sulforaphane was made right there. <laughs> Magic! That's the second strategy. You don't want to wait? Sprinkle a, little so sprinkle a little mustard powder. So the only reason why you'd ha hack and hold is if you don't like mustard powder. I mean, it's a little bit, but some dishes maybe, if you're putting a mustard sauce on it, well then who cares, right? Uh, also horseradish, that's a cruciferous vegetable packed with morosinase, uh, packed with this enzyme, so you can add it afterwards, or you can hack and hold. Those are the two techniques for maximizing sulforaphane, but that's why it's complicated, because it's not actually in the vegetable, you actually have to create it to get the benefit. Oh, fantastic question. Okay, what about, what about frozen broccoli? Frozen broccoli, the way anyway, anyone knows their food processing, what you have to do when you um, freeze greens or freeze a vegetable like broccoli, it'll rot unless you kill the enzymes off first. So what they do is they blanch the vegetables before they freeze them. Kill off the enzymes so the, 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 the greens don't auto-digest in the bag in the freezer. Anyone who's tried to like freeze their own greens, it doesn't work. You gotta blanch them first. So they kill off the bro they kill off the enzyme before they freeze it. So if you're starting with frozen broccoli, hack and hold too late. Well, you need mustard powder. That's where you whip out the mustard powder. All right, and then boom, you get all the benefits. Or look, you can eat raw. You, obviously, you can eat raw broccoli. Um, now, your digestive enzymes kill off the enzyme too, but it takes, uh, you have 45 minutes in your stomach. So, you're, so 
so you eat raw broccoli, you eat broccoli sprouts, um, and you get all the benefits because in your stomach, um, the enzyme's doing its magic, and by the time it actually, uh, the enzyme gets destroyed, it's too late, it's done its business. So you can get the benefits of raw um, through cooking if you hack and hold or the mustard powder. Great question.